Oh, Cyrus, double check your email, but I have approved your paid time off. On a more personal note, remember to pack your underwear this time. So sweet! And, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I should probably do that. PTO, what are you using that for? Uh, one of my favorite authors is doing a signing a few towns over, so some fellow geeky friends and I are going to go get our books and merch signed. And then we're going to, you know, stick around for another few days to explore the city, chill, do the tourist thing, etc. You are such a dork. Yes, yes he is. Hi, what can I get for you? Uh, just a medium coffee, dark roast please. And I'm a manager for a retail store. I've got to say, I never would have approved PTO for something like that. If it was something like a funeral or wedding, then maybe. But you're screwing over your other employees here. First of all, PTO is meant to be used. You can't promise paid time off and then deny it when they ask for it. That just makes you a liar. I'm not saying never approve it, just only for necessary reasons. Which leads me to my second point. We are not judges over people's lives. Our workplace is just one facet of our employees' lives. And most of them only work for us to enhance the other parts. I want Cyrus to be able to spend a week in another city having fun with his friends and idle because it means my workplace is able to make that happen. He'll come back from that trip refreshed, happy, and ready to do more work. But if I denied him that because it wasn't important enough, then he would spend that week annoyed, resentful, and dragging his feet. But you barely have any employees here. You can't tell me you can easily cover for him. If I have a lack of employees, then it's on me to hire more, not on Cyrus to give up his time, energy, and mental health to make up for that. And frankly, I could also use a break, so I'm likely to close down the entire cafe while he's gone to relax. Oh my god, you're gonna lose so much money. Only a couple of days of profits. There's plenty in the savings. Your cafe is going to the ground. That's my problem. Yours is the ridiculously high turnover rate at your retail store. How do you know about that? Did you curse me with that? I don't have to. You're doing that very well on your own. Here's your coffee. Four dollars. Oh, yes! You brought fudge. Yeah. I miss my late night TV show. It was the perfect background noise while I baked. I miss when writers could actually make a decent living with just writing. I forget. You're old as balls. No, that's the boss. I didn't come to Earth until the telegram was invented. Oh, were you guys talking about the writer's strike? Yeah. God, what a bunch of whiners. I miss my favorite shows. Stop complaining and get back to work. That's not the angle I would have gone with. You know that screenwriters are being paid pennies, even for successful series, right? A lot of them have to work second or even third jobs just to put food on the table. I'm not mad at the writers. I'm pissed at the producers for being assholes and putting them in this situation. Oh, that's just the way Hollywood works. If you don't like it, then leave. Mm. You know, when someone says that's just the way it is, you know that they're either too selfish or too cowardly to want to make change. Excuse me? Yeah, it sucks. Strikes always do. That's the point. If you want it to end, then put pressure on the people who should have been paying their workers a living wage in the first place. And if you're really bored, there's this great mode of storytelling called books. I did not come here to be insulted. Then why did you come here? Seriously, this is 90% of what we do. Hi, could I get a Hellfire Mocha, please? That'll be six fifty. And what is that book sticking out of your bag? Huh? Oh, it's a sci-fi novel by Nadia Korfor. She's a Nigerian-American Afrofuturism author with banging prose and incredible storytelling. Yeah, I'm familiar. With the audiobooks, Dyslexia makes physical reading a bitch and a half. Oh, I hear you. I like audiobooks when I'm in the car or on a workout, which is not always the smartest move because one time I was on the treadmill when this huge plot twist happened and I fell right off. I almost twisted an ankle. Oh, I once broke down sobbing in a crowded bus because one of my favorite characters just died. Betrayed by his best friend. Oh, that's the worst. Right? How did everyone on the bus react to a himbo breakdown? This very nice old Latina lady gave me her kerchief, did not speak a lick of English, but she figured out what was gone pretty quick. Still would have been better if I'd had a cute geek to commiserate with. I think Cyrus is flirting. Is he? Definitely. He always goes for the extroverted geeks. So, single AF, is that by choice or bad luck? Hmm? Oh, uh, currently by choice. Every time I flirt with a bookworm, she seems to think that because I'm fey, we're bound to be mates. Oh, I hate the faded mates trope. 
Unless it's in fan fiction, but fan fiction is supposed to be a dumpster fire of all my guilty pleasures. Exactly! You're not paying for it, so it's pure indulgence. Right? Just don't let my therapist see it because I think she would get a bit concerned. Hey, hey, if the cinnamon roll didn't want to be emotionally and physically tortured until they are either rescued or snap into an absolute badass, then they wouldn't be the cinnamon roll. Thank you. So, if I were to ask if you wanted to go on a coffee date, I'd say I work at a coffee shop and ask instead for a lunch date. My treat. You know what? That's fair. Do you like Thai? Man, how come we weren't that fast? You have self-esteem issues and I don't like changing the status quo unless it's gradual and predictable. Fair. Oh, before we cement details, because if I wait then it gets awkward, but bringing up up first is also awkward. Anyway, do you know what this flag here is? Bisexuality? Same rainbow, different color. It's asexuality. Basically, I don't experience sexual attraction at all. Oh, coming right out the gate with that. That is a bold play. It's smart. Handle it like a band-aid. Asexuality is not real. It's just a trend to make late bloomy teenagers feel better about themselves. Jennifer Charles? No, no, back. Oh, come on. Let him fight his own battles. We'll interfere if needed. Mm, nope, it's been around since people have been peopling. The word might be new, but there's always been asexuals and aromantics running around. And we see evidence of it in things like the ancient Greek pantheon, in Queen Elizabeth I, in the warrior princess Cthulhuan, in the existence of spinsters who refuse any romantic pursuits throughout history. That doesn't mean they never wanted sex or attraction. It's part of being human. And if you don't experience it, you're either lying to yourself or you really need to see a doctor. Or you could spend some time with me. I'm sure we could fix that up real quick. And what are you doing? Looking up curses. No. Hey, you're the one who's always encouraging her to practice her witchcraft. Wow. Wow. That is phenomenal. I know, right? I can literally feel every shred of romantic attraction I just had for you shrivel up and die. It's like when you leave a slug out in the heat. It's just gone. Here's your mocha. Enjoy the book. Next! Oh, someone just made Cyrus cry. Do-da, do-da. That someone is gonna die. bum do doo da day Does not matter to me if they're family. You made him cry. You're gonna die. bum do doo da day Cyrus told you he is a stu-da, do-da. You shouldn't have gotten in his face. bum do doo da day He's been alive 300 years. Do-da, do-da. He knows his own identity, dear. bum do doo da day Asexuality is real, so save us from your spiel. Don't be a bitch. Cause she's a witch. bum do doo da day Hey, uh, how you doing, big guy? Hmm? Oh, fine. You sure? Cause, um... She was a bit of a bitch. It was smart of you to tell her about your asexuality up front, but just because it hurts less to have her insult you now rather than later when you're together doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. Guys, I'm fine. Thank you. I used to keep my mouth shut about it. It's not that I'm sex repulsed. I'm just very meh about the whole thing. It doesn't let me bond with someone the way it does with aloes. But then they start to think that they're doing something wrong, and it just kind of bleeds out from there. I used to try to keep my autism a secret from people at first, but masking just leads to more stress and more nonverbal episodes. If I started dating someone and then told them I was autistic, they would accuse me of lying or deceiving them. Same thing if I hid that I'm bisexual. Eventually, I just started to do what you did. Yeah, same. I mean, it does a great job of weeding out the assholes. But of course, then you still have to deal with the assholes, which is exhausting. Cyrus, did you ever try non-monogamy or open relationships? Yeah, it it doesn't work for me. All respect for the people who do pull it off. I just haven't figured out the trick yet. My last serious relationship was closed monogamy and ended with my partner cheating on me. So that was fun. Yikes. That's happened to me. And people think I'm going to cheat because I'm bi. Okay, that makes absolutely no sense. Oh my god, I just realized something. We're the meme! Cool. But context? I'm non-binary, Nicole is bisexual, you're ace, we've all been fucked over by the queer community. Oh my god, you're right. Oh, that is bad. The Queer Erasure Club. That's good. We should get matching t-shirts or something. Put a sticker in the window. 
And here is your iced latte and your fudge. Enjoy your day. Thank you. Oh, tip jar. Uh, listen, I've been coming in for a little while, and I couldn't help but overhear some conversations you and your Faye employee have had, so uh, forgive me if I'm being rude here, but I have to ask, how old are you? Me? Oh, it's difficult to say. About 1,200 years, by my guess. And how much of that was spent on Earth? That's a little trickier to explain, thanks to the odd time discrepancy between Earth and the Fey realm. Thanks to the efforts of myself and several other powerful sorcerers, we've mostly got them lined up, so if you spend a weekend in the Fey realm, you're only missing about a month on Earth rather than centuries. But that's a very recent development. All that to say, I've been popping in and out of your realm for about 5,000 years Earth time. Except... I feel I should clarify, I've been living on Earth full-time since just before the Irish potato famine. That's when my ward and I made the move to America. You've been here since the 1840s? Yes. So... I'm a historian specializing in the American Civil War and Reconstruction Era. <sighs> I get one of you at least once a year. Yes, I was involved in the Underground Railroad and the Civil War. Yes, Abraham was aware of my fey nature, but that was considered top secret information until fey creatures and the like became public knowledge in the 1960s. No, he did not let me actually fight because of the need to keep fey creatures a secret from those who would hunt us down, and also probably my lack of male genitalia, which is why the war dragged on for four years instead of two months. But I did contribute enchantments and jinxes to the Union side that helped nudge them along. After that, I stayed up here in the North and was not involved in the Reconstruction as a great number of Fey immigrants were coming into the mortal world, and I was needed to help them get coordinated and stay hidden from human eyes. If you want any further information or a sit-down interview, I will expect to be compensated for my time. $300 for two hours filmed? A thousand. Six hundred with a finite amount of follow-up questions over email. Fine, send me your schedule. Yes, I'll be in touch. You know, if you wrote an autobiography, it would probably be an instant bestseller. Ugh, I left the military to get away from paperwork. Happy Pride Month! Our special for June is the Rainbow Cappuccino, which uses the light of actual rainbows purchased from the leprechauns topped with actual clouds. Our baker has also been having fun with Pride cookies. They're shaped like little flags, almost too cute to eat. Almost. <laughs> wow, another corporation plastering rainbows and everything. Get more sales before pretending we don't exist for the other 11 months of the year. Gotta love June. Wow, the bitterness is strong with this one. I understand your frustration, but there are a few problems associating that with Cafe Latte. The first is that this establishment only has three locations, Clock Street, Insta Avenue, and just off the tube of you, so I would hardly count it as a corporation. Oh, good to know that small businesses can also act like corporate shills. That they can, but most of them probably don't send a significant portion of their profits to the Trevor Project, or hire a mostly queer staff. Wait, really? Do you not? See the pins. I put a lot of time to organizing them. And our baker, they're not here right now, they're non-binary. We put a lot of energy into making sure that this is a safe space for the queer community and other minorities all year round. This month, a portion of our profits goes to the Trevor Project. In October, it'll be for breast cancer research. Back in February, it was the NAACP, that type of thing. Sorry, it's, uh, it's been a week. Are you also part of our mafia? You can put a big old question mark on that one. In terms of sexuality, I am straight. It's the romance that gets a little murky. Because I have been in several romantic relationships, but that wasn't because I had a romantic connection with them. It was because I was in a dark place and craved companionship. Usually with terrible, emotionally abusive people. Okay, so you have the trauma. That's a good sign for queerness. Got the fashion, another mark in your favor. Thank you, it was a handmade gift. Despite being over a thousand years old, I'm still trying to figure out if I have ever felt romantic attraction to anyone or just tricked myself into thinking I did. I don't think so, but I'm not secure enough in that to announce that I am indeed a romantic. Eh, all good, boss. Life's a journey. Take your time and have fun in the ally section while you figure it out. Agreed. Could I get one of those rainbow cappuccinos except make it a latte, please? Thanks. And here is your change. Boss will make your drink. It'll be a few minutes. Hola, mama. ¿Cómo estás? And what can I get for you? 
How about some goddamn respect for our country? What? You let these people speak whatever language they want here? Uh, yeah. I encourage it. It's always good to know an extra language, especially one as common as Spanish. Or Mandarin. Or Arabic. Yeah, and while you can read translations of their most classic stories, it's really better to read it in the original language. Someone gets left behind or lost in translation, like, like the Odyssey. You really gotta read that in its original ancient Greek. Well, that's great for whatever Looney Tunes world you come from, but this is America. We- Hey, you. Dude, she's on the phone. This is America. You speak English here. Anglais. If you don't like that, then go back to your country. Mama, no moment. Bitch, I was born in Ohio. <clears throat> then why aren't you speaking English? Well, one, my mom's Spanish is better than her English. Two, I don't want to lose the ability to speak Spanish, so I practice it as often as I can. Three, it's none of your goddamn business. Well, you're in my country, so yeah, it is. It is not. Ma'am, this is your drink. I apologize for the rude behavior of my other guest. And you. What? I'm just standing up for my rights. I'm not even going to begin to dissect that sentence. You are cursed to forget all English. Instead, you will speak only Spanish. You're going to have to relearn your native tongue. Okay. So, if I wanted to pick up Mandarin, there's a give and take. If you want to magically learn it, you have to give up a language you already know. Rats. Good morning, Miss Bob. Good morning. I haven't seen you in a while. Oh, just helping the wife over at the yarn store. Uh, I noticed earlier you were selling those prod cookies. Are you all out? We are at the moment. They're best sellers this month. I'm sure we'll have some tomorrow, though. Well, that's good, because, um... Well, between you and me. Hmm? My grandbaby just told us that they were gay just last week. So far, only the family knows. They were real nervous about it, and I was hoping to give them some to... I don't know, show support? Oh, of course. If you want, I can ask my baker to set aside something. Excuse me, Bob. I'm just gonna step right in here. So, did you want uh, one big pride flag cookie or one of the baggies of mini cookies that each have one color of the pride flag in question? Oh, um, let's make it a bundle so she can snack on them or share them. Okay, so she specifically used the word gay when coming out? Yeah, but also said that she was a lesbian, which honestly kind of confused me because I thought that gay was just for men. So while gay typically is used for men who like other men, it can also be used by lesbians, women who like other women, which is great because this gives you options. You can have a cookie bag that uses the traditional rainbow pride flag, or a cookie bag that uses the colors of the lesbian pride flag, the one with the uh, shades of pink and magenta and a bit of orange. Both? Both. Both is good. So I'll whip those two up tonight and set them aside for you. You can buy them from Bob at your usual time tomorrow morning. Thank you. I really do appreciate it. Until then, can I have my usual? You got it. You're being unusually quiet. Hmm? Oh, I'm fine. You usually only say that when you're not fine. I am. I just... You know Yarn Granny and her veteran husband? They still won't tell us their names. Is that a joke? At this point, yeah, probably. Anyway, apparently they have a granddaughter who just came out as a lesbian, and the veteran came in asking for some pride cookies to give to her as, you know, a little show of support. Those sell really well. Are you sad because you ran out? Oh no, not at all. I'm making more tonight and he'll get it tomorrow. I'm just... Jealous. Yeah. Because my family wasn't nearly that accepting. The half that do accept me did it only after a very long time, and even now they still slip up. The other half would probably rather I be dead. Pride can be a tough for people in your situation, or those still in the closet. I'm sorry your family has so many dicks. <sighs> yeah, me too. The good news is that that granddaughter isn't going to have to deal with it, and if we keep pushing like this, then her grandchild will have it even better. That doesn't really help us now, because this is not tomorrow, this is today, and it sucks, but I find it hopeful. Yeah. I hate being maudlin. Do you want to go to a parade? Oh yeah, there is one going on tonight. Wait, with your sensory issues? 
Nah. There's a drag show at a bar tomorrow. The performances are hilarious. By then I'll be ready to laugh again if you're interested. Is that the show that has the woman in the sparkly green dress? Yeah, Emmy. She's fun. We'll go.